Thank you so much for the comments so far. I've really enjoyed reading them, but best of all, you guys made me think of things that I hadn't even thought of. So the answers I talk about here include perspectives from you guys, and I really do value that this is a dialogue, so please do leave comments about what you think. First on the question of determinism in quantum mechanics. There's a few ways to see this, and it depends on how you see the wave function. If you believe that the wave function is really everything you can know about an object, even in theory, then the Schrodinger equation says this, the state of a particle, not just what you know about the state, but the actual state is determined in the future, provided that you don't make a measurement. That simply is the definition of determinism. And so in this view, quantum mechanics is deterministic up to the point of measurement. However, people pointed out that if you don't think that the wave function is the state, but rather tells you about the uncertainty you have about the state, for example in Bohmian mechanics, then there is uncertainty right from the beginning. But what I wonder is, isn't the opposite of determinism randomness, not uncertainty? Also, even in the case with uncertainty, doesn't the Schrodinger equation tell you how to update your uncertainty? So would you accept that as a form, form of determinism or not? As for measurement, in Bohmian mechanics, my take on it is that the outcome is uncertain but not random, making Bohmian mechanics deterministic. Many worlds is an interpretation that I want to make videos about eventually, but it's also deterministic because it doesn't accept that measurement causes collapse. Instead, all possible outcomes happen. The second question was me asking you to prove this statement. This is my proof and I'll put it up on the screen. But as for what it would mean if it wasn't true, many people had some great answers about why that wouldn't make any sense. Say you started with this state and you're watching it as time goes by. At time t1, you see that it's this. Then you check again after t2 amount of time, and so you update the state again. But then say your friend had only checked on the state once at the very end. Then their state is this. But you should both agree, I mean there is only one state. This rule is very obvious, but it's something that you really want your time evolution to have. Now, remember when I was picking what angle of rotation we wanted, I said it should depend on t. But why not on t squared or something else? Because only t would obey this rule. Verify that for yourself. Third, this one is some maths too, and it goes like this. Say I have a superposition of some states, and then you want to show this. Well, what you should do is write each of these in the energy eigenbasis, since time evolution is really easy on that basis, and then add all the factors in. But now compare that to the time evolution of each of these individual parts, and you can see that these two things are equal. Now, sorry this is a bit rushed, but like I said, I'd really like to keep up the discussion, so please comment with any thoughts.